Zakat, giving alms to the poor and needy. Zakat is the third pillar of Islam. Zakat, in Arabic, translates to the act of giving of alms to the poor and needy. Offering zakat is a religious obligation for Muslims. In Islam, it is considered the duty of individuals with wealth to assist the poor and needy. The term zakat in Arabic, linguistically, has several meanings, including to purify, to increase, cleanliness, blessings, and goodness. Zakat means to purify because, according to the Islamic faith, one's wealth and property are not pure unless the owner shares a divinely appointed proportion with people in need. The principle of zakat also purifies one's heart of greed and selfishness, whereas the humanistic love of wealth is natural. Zakat is intended to free Muslims from the excessive and all-consuming love of money and selfish desire, teaching self-discipline. Take, O Muhammad, from their wealth a charity by which you purify them and cause them to increase and invoke all his blessings upon them. Indeed, your invocations are reassurance for them, and Allah is hearing and knowing. Quran 9, 103. Zakat also means growth and blessings, because if one were to give and help others in times of ease and difficulties, God will be pleased and return with increase and bless his wealth. Allah the Glorious has promised that the one who spends his wealth in zakat will see his prosperity increased manyfold. The example of those who spend their wealth in the way of Allah is like a seed of grain, which grows seven spikes. In each spike is a hundred grains, and Allah multiplies his reward for whom he wills, and Allah is all-encompassing and knowing. Quran 2, 261. Our Prophet has stated that the act of charity does not decrease wealth. Instead, it blesses, purifies, and ultimately increases one's fortune. There are three primary types of giving in Islam. Two of these giving methods are mandatory, while one is highly recommended but not obligatory. The first obligatory act of giving is called zakat al-mal which is the zakat giving from one's saved wealth and liquid assets. The second obligatory zakat is called zakat al-fitr, which is a special zakat due at the end of the month of Ramadan to be paid to the head of the household. The third type of giving in Islam is called sadaqa, which is voluntary and can be given at any time on any amount. Sadaqa comes from an Arabic word meaning sincerity. As giving sadaqa, or charity is a sign of sincere faith in God by the person who gives it. Sadaka is described in the Holy Quran as a beautiful loan, which includes any act of charitable giving made as a gesture of love and generosity. Whether the act stands in the form of giving money or time, helping others, praying for someone, spreading knowledge, giving advice, forgiving someone, visiting the sick, or even smiling at someone. Zakat plays a significant role and holds a commendable high standard in Islam, to the extent that about three dozen verses in the Holy Quran link the obligatory prayer to charity. God describes the true believers as the ones that both pray their obligatory prayers and give zakat. This proves the concept that zakat is the believer's most important obligation after the obligatory prayer. Indeed, those who believe and do righteous deeds and establish prayer and give zakah will have their reward with their Lord, and there will be no fear concerning them, nor will they grieve. Quran 2, 277 All things belong to God, and God has given wealth to specific individuals so they can distribute resources to those not as fortunate. People are given wealth as a trust from God to distribute to and to benefit the ones in need. The true owner of all things is not man, but God, and we human beings are merely his trustees. God the Glorious, who provided wealth to the intended recipient, reserved a portion of the resources for the poor, so the underprivileged have a right to claim a portion of one's wealth. The concept of zakat reminds Muslims that everything they possess belongs to the Almighty. People are given their wealth as a test from God. Wealth should be acquired, distributed, and spent in a way which is pleasing to God. 
And it is He who made you successors upon the earth, and has raised some of you above others in degrees of rank, that He may try you through what He has given you. Quran 6, 165 The acquisition and hoarding of wealth for one's own sake to increase a man's worth is condemned. Mere acquisition of wealth counts for nothing in the sight of the Almighty, as it does not give man any merit in this life or the hereafter. Islam teaches that one should acquire wealth to spend it on his or herself, family, and people in need. The act of giving and helping others shows one's love of God, more than the amount or quantity of one's own wealth, as when they give to others, they donate funds they otherwise would have spent on themselves, doing so to please God the Almighty. Zakat is a sign of true belief and love in God. The ones who establish prayer, and from what we have provided them, they spend. They are the believers, truly. For them are degrees of high position, with their Lord and forgiveness and noble provision. Quran 8, 3-4 Zakat offers both humanitarian and socio-political benefits. It is designed by our Creator to reallocate and redistribute wealth in a society. Zakat establishes social justice and, if practiced collectively by a population, can lead a community to prosperity and security. Zakat helps to circulate wealth in a balanced way, stabilizing and equalizing the flow of money in a society, eliminating as it does the eternal cycle of poverty. Zakat is an interest-free financial strategy that could help prevent society from undergoing an economic recession. Every Muslim who has wealth exceeding a specific minimum a level known as Nisab, and who maintains that wealth for over one lunar year, must give zakat. Zakat is given annually based on the Islamic lunar calendar and is not based on the Western calendar, which is 11 days longer than its counterpart. The Nisab is the specific minimum amount of wealth that a Muslim must possess before being required to pay zakat. One must pay zakat if what they own is equal to or more than the equivalent to three ounces of gold, or its value in cash or trade goods. Zakat must be paid in gold and silver currency. Cash, agricultural produce such as date farms, livestock, rent income, and business commodities such as inventory stock in a shop warehouse. Islam requires Muslims to pay an annual contribution of 2.5% of the wealth and liquid assets they have accrued and held for over the course of one lunar year. Zakat is calculated on the person's earned net balance, that amount which remains after paying all other necessary expenses. Zakat is not an income tax. Rather, the amount due is based on what a Muslim has saved and held for an entire year, and not on their income level. Zakat is not paid from the pool of funds used for debt repayment, or necessary living expenses such as food, water, shelter, clothing, and transportation. The recipients of zakat are the poor, the needy individuals who live in turmoil, those who have accumulated much debt, captives, the zakat administrators, and more recipients. Scholars state that the poor and the impoverished are the most important categories of people eligible to receive zakat. Zakat expenditures are only for the poor and for the needy and for those employed to collect zakat and for bringing hearts together for Islam and for freeing captives or slaves and for those in debt and for the cause of Allah and for the stranded traveler, an obligation imposed by Allah and Allah is knowing and wise. Quran 960 The purpose of zakat is to help those who cannot help themselves. Zakat can be given to an individual's extended family. However, one may not give this specified amount to his parents or his children, as one is already obligated to support them. When one offers zakat in this world, he or she is really helping themselves as they are transferring needed goodwill from their worldly life to their afterlife, which is the best investment one can make. When one gives to someone in need, he shouldn't think of the gesture as a favor. Instead, he is giving to God. The one giving is more in need of the beggar than the beggar needs him. Whereas the beggar is in need only of money, the giver needs the Almighty's forgiveness. 
Do they not know that it is Allah who accepts repentance from his servants and receives charities, and that it is Allah who is the accepting of repentance, the merciful? Quran 9, 104 The benefits of giving and charity are many and varied. Amongst the benefits is the pleasure that God expresses to the one who gives. Zakat is known to extinguish the wrath that the Almighty may hold for one who doesn't give. Giving zakat also protects one from the punishment of hellfire. The act of giving to the needy awakens the soul and initiates genuine concern and sympathy for the well-being of the underprivileged and others. It is recommended to give charity in secrecy to ensure that one is offering for the right, pure reason of pleasing God and not to receive praise or to boast before others. Both acts which would nullify good deeds, however, under certain circumstances, for instance, if one has the intention to encourage others to donate similarly, one may give zakat in public. It is important to note that zakat money needs to be given from an untainted pool of 100% pure and halal funds, not taken from thefts or bribes, nor profits from interest-based loans or sales of alcohol, pork, drugs, or anything that is prohibited in Islam. God the Almighty is good and pure, and only accepts that which is good and pure. Fasting in the Holy Month of Ramadan The Holy Month of Ramadan is the ninth month of the Islamic lunar calendar and can last 29 or 30 days. The Islamic calendar is based on a lunar year of 12 full lunar cycles, taking 354 or 355 days. The moon circles the earth 12 times in a full lunar year. The observance of a new moon marks the beginning of each month. When a new moon is sighted, Ramadan begins and then fasting would commence in the next dawn. If a new moon is not sighted, then Muslims would start their fast the following day. Islam is built upon five pillars, and fasting during the month of Ramadan is the fourth pillar of Islam. Muslims fast by abstaining from eating, drinking, chewing gum, smoking, and involving in any sexual activity from dawn to sunset. Fasting in Islam does not solely comprise refraining from food and drinks. Instead, one is to abstain from every kind of evil, selfish desire, and wrongdoing. The purpose of fasting is not merely for the body. Instead, it's for the spirit as well. Fasting in Ramadan is for the soul, mind, and body. Muslims are commanded to refrain against gossiping, backbiting, slandering, lying, cheating, looking at what's prohibited, nursing a grudge, using sinful speech, and any wrongdoing. Muslims must adhere to the morals of Islam strictly during their fast, as failure to do so can violate one's fast. Fasting in Ramadan is obligatory for every sane, healthy Muslim who is not ill or traveling long distance, whether male or female, unless a female is on her menstruation cycle or having post-childbirth bleeding. Most religions practice some fasting that generally requires one to go without food or drinks for a specific period. According to the Bible, Jesus fasted for 40 days. But why do Muslims fast? The primary reason Muslims fast is because God the Almighty has commanded them to do so in His last and final revelation, the Holy Quran. The Holy Quran was sent down to the last and final nation, our nation, whereas the Bible, Torah, and all previous scriptures were sent to former nations. God states in the Quran, O you who believe, fasting is prescribed to you as it was prescribed to those before you, that ye may become righteous and hopefully learn self-restraint. Quran 2, 183. Fasting is an act of worship beloved by God. The holy month of Ramadan and the prescribed fasting is a gift in mercy to Muslims from the Almighty. God prescribes none rulings to his slaves unless there are great wisdom and benefit behind it. But how is Ramadan and fasting a gift in mercy to the ones that fast sincerely? Sin is defined as an act of disobedience in which a person goes against the commandments of God. God deliberately placed human beings on earth, knowing they will sin. By nature of human beings, mankind is failable and bound to sin due to outside evil influences, whether it's from friends, family, the media, or from Satan's attack and whispers that can stray one from the straight path 
leading them to destruction. God is willing to accept anyone's repentance. It is, in fact, Allah that loves people who repent repeatedly. Since Muslims are heir to sin because of ignorance, forgetfulness, or from the handiwork of Satan, mankind needs to be reminded and trained from abstaining from harmful behaviors that go against the commandments of God. God the Almighty states, fasting and abstaining from which is prohibited will increase one's taqwa. God the Almighty states fasting and abstaining from which is prohibited will increase one's taqwa. Taqwa is translated to God-fearing piety, righteousness, mindfulness, and consciousness of God where one is aware God is watching at all times. The concept of taqwa is expressed in the Holy Quran over 200 times. The word taqwa comes from the root word to guard. When one has taqwa or God consciousness, one loves to do good and avoid evil for the sake of God. But how does one attain taqwa by fasting? Fasting is a shield for mankind. Fasting protects a person from sin and lustful desires. The purpose of fasting is not merely physical training to withstand hunger, thirst, and exhaustion. Instead, it is disciplining the soul and the ego to give up what's loved in this world from material goods, wealth, etc. for the sake of God. Fasting Muslims seek to overpower and suppress sinful desires in themselves, putting aside all evils and bad behaviors to express their dedication and love to God and use it to draw closer to Him so that God becomes a reality in their lives, resulting in a higher spiritual state. Fasting in Ramadan offers one to develop spiritually and gain strength and control over one's soul and one's ego which would dominate one's life when left unchecked and unmonitored. Sincere and proper fasting for the full month of Ramadan every year is very beneficial for individuals and society as it develops piety and self-restraint. Once one is conscious that God is watching, one's sins and disobedience will dramatically decrease. Fasting in Ramadan recharges one's spiritual and physical state. Fasting is meant to install virtuous qualities in humans from being generous, patient, while cleansing the spiritual heart. Fasting cleansing the soul, mind, and body as temporarily giving up food, water, and many disobedient acts is a natural way of removing toxins from the soul, mind, and body. When fasting, one controls the urge to eat and drink, empowering one to exercise self-control and help to develop patience, inner strength, and willpower in a person. Fasting develops good qualities of endurance and self-restraint, helping one control his or her anger, tongue, and actions. Fasting help resists unlawful desires and wicked habits which would guard one against evil. Fasting in Ramadan suppresses worldly desires and strengthens one's spirituality. The holy month of Ramadan is special and blessed because the Holy Quran, which is God's final book, was revealed to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in this special month. Therefore, Muslims recite the Holy Quran frequently in this blessed month. Ramadan is the month where Muslims try to establish or re-establish a relationship with their Creator and the Holy Quran so that one may be guided. Ramadan is a month for deep inner reflection. Muslims believe they earn extra spiritual rewards in this month for good deeds which can lead them to paradise in the hereafter and avoid the punishment of the hellfire. During Ramadan, Muslims engage in consistent spiritual reflection and prayer with the aims of drawing closer to God and becoming a better person. During this blessed month, extra voluntary prayers are offered in every mosque well into the night, with many places of worship crammed with worshipers. Hearts are directed away from worldly material goods and get directed to Almighty, His religion, and His final revelation, the Holy Quran. Due to the blessings and rewards associated with this holy month, Muslims are encouraged to give and help others to the best of their ability. While the primary reason for fasting is to draw closer to Allah by purifying oneself, by abstaining from sins, and increasing acts of good, fasting comes with many additional benefits. Amongst the benefits of fasting is that it teaches man the principle of sincere love to God as he struggles to fast solely for the pleasure of God.
Fasting in Ramadan is supposed to help discontinue any bad habits one may have developed throughout the year. Fasting is supposed to free a person from the slavery of sinful desires as they give it up for a whole month. Fasting develops new good habits as Muslims increase acts of good in this month. Fasting in Ramadan is a way of experiencing hunger, thirst, exhaustion, and developing sympathy for the less fortunate, which should cause an increase in helping the less fortunate. Many take blessings like food and water for granted. When one is fasting, he or she realizes what the less fortunate feel every day. This should increase helping and giving others, especially the less fortunate, as fasting helps one to sympathize with the poor so one may know and experience their hardships. Fasting in Ramadan leads one to be more thankful and appreciate all of God's gifts and provisions. Fasting is a way to humble one before God and His creation, as hunger and thirst help one come in a realization they desperately need. God and His provisions decreasing one's false pride and arrogance. Fasting in Ramadan teaches patience as one feels the pain of deprivation, but He endures them patiently. Fasting teaches moderation and increases one willpower as one feels hunger but disciplines him or herself not to eat so they can benefit from the increased willpower and discipline after the month is over. This month is supposed to be a training period for the rest of the year so that one can be better equipped to resist temptations. Amongst the many spiritual benefits lie many physical benefits. Fasting in Ramadan speeds up one's metabolism, lowers cholesterol levels, helps with weight loss, endorses longevity, improves one's brain function, clears one's skin from acne and dry skin, improves the immune system, and purifies the body by allowing the body to rest from the continuous task of digesting food. Whereas fasting in the month of Ramadan may appear very exhausting and challenging, it is in fact an enjoyable time for Muslims. It becomes a month of family and friends getting together to worship the one God and to eat together after sunset. Ramadan has a different atmosphere from other months of the year. Often, local families and individuals sponsor breaking fast, and dinners at local mosques open to the community. Mosques are often packed with worshipers at night, and they usually hold special evening prayers in mosques during Ramadan. After the month, Muslims celebrate one of the two Islamic festivals, Eid al-Fitr, which translates to the festival of the breaking of the fast. It is a festival of celebration. It is a time of joy, a social gathering of family and friends, gift giving, wearing new clothes, and time which Muslims express thanks and gratitude to their creator for the self-control, will, strength, and the endurance and benefits they practiced and achieved during this holy month.